Um, hi everybody. Um, my name is Weilin, and um, just I just want to get a quick understanding. How many of you know why I'm here today? Know what? Know what? Why I'm here today? Okay. Thank you. Good to know. I see a few hands. Um, so I guess I should do a very quick introduction. Um, I'm here today um, because I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk about um, how I got to the top of Google search um, for a wine related keyword, narrowly defined keywords. But it was in fun to know. Uh, it was interesting, and there are some things that I can share about um, maybe you being able to do this for your own work for your startup. Um, and it's just some everything I did is free, so. No cost involved, except your time. Um, so, without further ado, I'll just jump right in. Um, okay. Now, I have to start by showing you my blog. Not because I'm trying to plug it, but it started from here and the material is here, which makes it a lot easier for me. You might look a bigger. Huh? Bigger, bigger. bigger yes. Oops, that's not bigger. I got it. Yes. The text is big enough, um, but the image I will show here. So. What happened was that, okay, one day I found out that, hey, on Google Analytics, I have some traffic coming from um, organic search results for, what is this? Sparkling Riesling Singapore, uh, which was fun to know because up to, until then, you get a lot of, if you're familiar with um, Google Analytics and you're trying to see the SEO, you know you always see not provided, or you get some really random string, like um, the, my wine website is called Bottles of Joy. Maybe I get like, a uh, joyful bottle or something like that. It just turns up a weird result. So when you get something good and there are like maybe five clicks or something, it catches your attention. So I saw that and I thought, oh, great. Um, what exactly uh, led to this? So um, I will go through a little bit about how I, what I think are, are the factors involved because um, there's no public it's, it's not public knowledge exactly how Google ranks their results, so inevitably we have to guess a little bit. But I think the guessing uh, is also informative and um, there's only so many factors that we can uh, hypothesize or involve. So I'll just share them with you. So what I have over here is the blog post of me tasting and reviewing um, one of Germ actually Germany's like, second most popular sparkling Riesling. Um, it's kind of niche actually, so to, it has to be said that it's not as if sparkling Riesling are as popular as beer. So to, in order to rank well for this, it's not um, impossible, it's not um, something that will cost you a million dollars. And that's why this even works in the first place. Um, but let's take a look at the blog post itself. So you can see what it actually looks like. Then you can probably tell the elements involved. Yes, I think this is the one. So, the most interesting thing for me is that um, rather than write a straightforward blog post, this one actually has a video. Um, so the, the quick, the most obvious takeaway is that, gosh, I think video probably makes a big difference um, because um, I did 
actually a test and I think the results verify that video can actually give you a big boost um, for your uh, rankings. Now, how did I verify that? Okay. Let's just... So you see, um, I did a search for a very, very popular brand of champagne, a uh, very quick one, and you see that the organic results begin here. Everything above that is ads. You may not be able to see the uh, light yellow box because of the projector, the way the projector's colors work, but this is where the organic results start. And number two and three, result number two and three are just ridiculous four second videos just so that you can put a phone number there, you can call, and you can order. But this illustrates something, that just because you have a video, it counts as something. It counts uh, more, more so than a very respectable uh, wine shop from Australia here, because our search includes the term Singapore. Um, it, this, of course, will not be considered as authoritative. So these guys are in Singapore, and they have a YouTube video, so they outranked it, even though this is a very, very uh, decent website. You look at this, this is, I have this SEO plugin that tells me um, metrics like PA is page authority and BA is domain authority. Um, for the purpose of this discussion, you only need to know that domain authority is like how influential um, your domain is. So domain is pretty decently influential, 34. Um, this is like Wikipedia of wine searches, like the Wikipedia of wine. So it doesn't really matter. Like, um, it's not extremely targeted. Like, because I'm trying to look for buy Wolf Champagne. So of course, I don't expect Wikipedia to be the first top result. I expect something more about uh, e-commerce, something where I can actually purchase the product. So this, just this quick search um, helps us understand that YouTube um, it's very important for getting you a better result. If nobody else is doing it and you do it, instantly you got a big leg up. And which I think is demonstrated over here because I have the video. Um, what I also did, and which I think is also is a great, great help, is the video transcript. So you can keep it below the fold because if people are browsing your blog, they don't necessarily have to read your lengthy transcript. Um, but if you put it there, it gives them Google something to crawl, uh, which otherwise they would not be able to. Um, I understand that YouTube now has, um, they have some kind of speech recognition, so they can try to give you, try to give you a transcript, but it's not 100% accurate, which is why I did this, because it's just giving me weird results. So, yeah, very simply, um, the first thing, first takeaway, big takeaway, is the YouTube video. Um, then I think there's only like two. Okay, okay. it's kind of long. So the second takeaway is um, the picture there. Um, so if you have a Google authorship set up, um, you also get a boost to your SEO. So um, who here doesn't know what's Google authorship? It's okay. All right, that's great. Um, so Google Authorship is just Google's way of um, trying to let you carry your authority around, your social authority, the person that you are. And it, all, the pro all the writing, all the stuff that you do, um, which Google can index, whether it's on Google+, Plus, um, whether you plus one something, whether you wrote a blog post somewhere. Um, if you tell Google that you know, this is me, this is linked to my profile, they can give you credit for that. So if you are like Robert Scoble, or you are like Mike Harrington, then it's great. When you write somewhere, they know, okay, you are a very competent, very popular writer, and I will give you credit accordingly. And even if you are not, um, I, have, I think there's actually good reason to believe that simply having a Google Plus profile, even if it's not a genuine human being, actually helps. So it's something to consider. Um, if you are wanting to start a company blog, but you don't want it to be associated with you personally because you like to keep your work and personal life separate, it's entirely valid. It's okay for you to create um, alter ego 
you can give it whatever name you want, it doesn't have to be real. And this profile can be the one to show up here for your work and you will get the benefit of a better SEO, better Google ranking because of it. Yeah? And let's see anything what else is there? Okay, um, there are only two more things I'd like to mention. So, quick recap. First thing I mentioned was um, the video. Uh, you use YouTube. Second thing is set up your Google Plus authorship. I think I should just show anyway. It's a big help and it's pretty easy to set up. And then the two things remaining that I will just quickly go through are um, distribution, distribute your content, and um, let's see, what's the last one? No, uh, keywords. So let's talk about the distribution first. Um, so if you have content and you want to, you, you want to get um, credit from Google for creating content, good content, um, but maybe you don't really know what does that entail. Does it mean I have to commit to maybe writing um, stuff that I put on some uh, public directory of articles, you know, or um, I have to write on Quora, for instance, and keep going at it in order to get consistent um, results? Uh, I can give you a short answer to that. Short answer is no, you don't really have to. Uh, you can, in fact, um, just write fairly short articles, about 500 words, and um, distribute them on, you can just create one post blogs. Um, this can be on Blogspot, uh, you can put on WordPress, um, and Quora, and so on, so forth. Each, the, um, the way that the Google ranking algorithm works, um, it gives you credit for links coming from each of these domains. So if you have like, okay, I have one from Blogspot, one from WordPress, one from uh, Quora, it's a, it's like a checklist. It gives you the credit, gives your profile the credibility, and that is sufficient at the basic level. If you find that, of course, that these are viable traffic sources and um, you can develop it further, then by all means, go ahead, write more content, and you'll get an uh, even better result. And that brings me to the. Last point, right? Um, one thing that in the um, synopsis on hackers and painters, which I mentioned, the last thing is um, you can, if you could just take a minute more to craft your message, uh, you can actually improve a lot um, the results that you get. So, one of the things that I think is a very common mistake um, is that. When we write stuff, um, we have the title, you have these um, headers, right, H2 tags, and too often um, we just go with the flow and we think that, okay, I just want to write something that makes sense, coherent, it's useful to the user. Um, but if you could if I just offer a little bit more, take a minute, then you can write something that um, perhaps will rank better for SEO because there are keywords involved. Like if I want, we're even writing this blog post, I could have named it anything. Like I could have called it um, how I reached top of the pile on Google. You know, how I beat Google at its game. But the thing is, um, if you can, the more descriptive, the, or rather, the more closely um, the keyword you are trying to rank for, you know, matches exactly the stuff that you write, the better the outcome. So if you want to rank for, say, top Google search results, then you ought to find a way to put it in um, one of the first um, bodies of text to show up. So in this case, I put it in the title. Um, and then also I put it here, top Google search results. So if you're able to just uh, 
observe this simple rule. I try to put the keyword um, in the title or early in the body. That gives you also a big edge. Um, text that comes earlier in the body actually is considered more valuable than text that comes lower. So um, if you are sometimes, it's really nice for one kind of weird thing. Sometimes we have a lot of difficulty writing an introduction, like you want to write a really nice one. Forget it. Just write something that has your keyword and it gets right to the point. It's fine. If you want to prettify it later on, it's fine. You can do that, but later. To, to be maximally effective with your time and your writing, just make sure that your words are there. And for me, I think that about wraps up the main points. Uh, I tried to keep it short because I know that uh, we have Suntil who was waiting for his turn. And also, the text is already on the blog, so if you want to read it, please go ahead. Um, and I, um, I think, do we have, Michael, do we have some time for any questions? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I hope I kept that really short. So, does anybody have any questions? Yes. Yeah. Like where is it hosted? Um, are you using some like Flow Player, yeah, Vimeo, yeah. Daily Motion? Yeah, that's a really good question. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't really know. <laughs> it's a. Uh, um, I've read. I've read that. I mean, I follow a few blogs that I really respect, and I've read that some people say it doesn't really matter. And Google's own policy on this is that um, all these web properties are treated equally. Um, the search, the search, on search, they'll say we have we. <coughs> Um, we, it is not our policy to favor the Google properties because if you do that, it just uh, makes really everybody else really angry. Like you know, I'm not owned by Google, therefore I get a worse outcome. Um, then also there are people who say that clearly it has to make a difference because you know YouTube is fully optimized. The team will tell them when something is wrong. So I really don't have a straightforward answer. That's a good question. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. When you yeah. say sorry. when you say uh, like uh, use multiple like make something on Blogger, make something on WordPress, make something yeah. on Quora, you mean actually write different posts or actually copy paste and actually spam from all? Thank you. That's also a very good question. So you should write different posts, <laughs> um, but um, there are fantastic tools out there that are totally free and which give you the nice benefit of not having to yes. we know, we know IFTT, right? <laughs> uh, not IFTT, in fact they just show you, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> ah, okay. So since it's my history, obviously you know that this is something useful. So you have this uh, really simple tools that give you um, something like let me just magnify this so here you see you have one block that is uh, it will permute, permutate between these, th these four words no these four phrases right? creating publishing constantly and then you have this is it's always unique and then after that again it permutates between these things so if your article is written in this format, it will always create something fairly unique. And then you spin it, and you have article unique with that, and you have several different kinds of uh, articles. Nice. It's, yeah, it's really, really nice. And if you are having a lot of difficulty with creative writing, you know, a synonym, a synonym generator also helps. Who doesn't? <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Evan. Um, anything else? In this case, I'm not the author of the, for example, I copy article from 
some popular blog. Yeah. I, I, I can spin the text here. Yes. It allows the line on the original author of the Oh, that has the, the that has the potential to get you into more trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, like the 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 ideal way to do it might maybe is you write something that's totally yours, unique. Then uh, after that, you could try to create variations of it. But you should at least try to do it one time, like fully your own. Yeah. Then um, some effort put in to make it unique uh, as much as possible would be very helpful. Yeah. Um, might also be worth mentioning that um, there's stuff like the uh, markup they can use, like Open Graph, the Open Graph protocol to um, designate this this text as a description. This is the image to show on Facebook when people share it, and there's also Twitter cards. Twitter has a protocol for the same purpose called Twitter cards. Is that right? Yes. There you go. So, um, anything else? That seems to be about it. Okay. Um, if you have any follow-up questions, um, you can talk to me later, or just um, tweet to me. The Twitter handle. Twitter. My Twitter handle is. So yeah. So I guess that's all. Thank you all very much. You did a great audience.